So, welcome to this lecture of digital system design with PLDs and FPGA. Last 8 lectures we had a look at the advanced uh, digital design. We started with uh, an overview of the field or a revision of the field. Then I gave an, a brief overview of the, the current state of the art, um, the basic uh, what is happening in the field. Then we started with uh, uh, synchronous sequential circuit, we have started with the synchronous counter, its structure, how to design it, timing analysis. Then we get got on to the design itself. Uh, we have seen uh, the hierarchical design of a CPU, we have seen what is data path, what is a controller, how to hierarchically uh, design the data path and using CPU as an example, we have seen the behavior of uh, the controller of finite state machine, what is the structure of it, uh, then we have seen a timing analysis of it and how to design a control algorithm. Uh, and uh, a finite state machine using state diagram and we have wound up uh, the whole process with a case study somewhat uh, realistic uh, real life uh, case study of a data acquisition system. We started with the spec and went through all the way like uh, the partition, data path design, controller design, uh, how to implement uh, the you know the state diagram. Uh, the next state logic, output logic and all the way down and what is the part of the uh, kind of the designer main part and what are, what are the tools plus designer and so on. But now uh, we have some portion left in the advanced digital design. But before proceeding uh, uh, I thought it is better we look at this hardware description language. So that when now onwards when we go with the digital design or any anything PLDs or FPGA wherever it is appropriate we can uh, put the connected VHDL uh, or the hardware description language uh, that is a basic idea that is why we go. So now uh, for quite a few lectures we will hand have the, the VHDL uh, lectures where my plan is to at least complete uh, the, the combination circuit. Um, uh, description of models and sequential circuit, uh, test benches and some demonstration using the tools available, free tools available uh, you know how to write the code, how to synthesize, how to simulate and so on. So let us uh, turn to the slide um, of this uh, VHTL okay. Uh, so let us uh, look at the slide. Um, now the VHTL uh, the the, the full form of the VHDL is VHSIC hardware description language. Uh, that means uh, the very high speed integrated circuit hardware description language. It has started in 1970s and 80s by Department of Defense USA for um, maybe I will give a brief on the context so that uh, sometime the, the context make uh, things clear. You do not grumble or complain why certain things are uh, like that and it is an IEEE standard IEEE 1076.3. There are various um, uh, years you know 93, 97, 2012, 2002 and all that. Uh, I do not exactly remember but then um, uh, the, these are the various versions of the VHDL. Uh, essentially it uh, uh, started with some uh, kind of limitation of the earlier design methodology which was using something called uh, schematic capture okay. So I do not know whether you are familiar with the schematic capture but I will show a slide which, which is taken from the internet uh, of some, some kind of hardware um, digital mainly digital hardware but then uh, you see this is um, kind of some flip flops are there, some muxes are there, inverters are there and all that. A schematic would always involve some symbol of the IC you are using or the or the gate or the flip flop many a times in terms of the, uh, the ICs you are using. Suppose this is a flip flop which is written IC3B. So uh, and there are pin numbers and it shows how it is interconnected okay. That was the uh, the earlier days that was starting point of a design 
uh, you put like you want an, an inverter you put the inverter symbol which you mark which is a part of the IC maybe this there are 4 inverters in a in an IC so uh, or 6 inverters then it will be IC 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 1E like that the numbering goes and the pin numbers you can see that this is a output is 15 pin number, 14 pin number and all that and people would put symbols and interconnect with the wires ok. So that was basically the schematic capture and uh, when uh, one design a printer circuit board there will be an associated package with it ok. If it is in the standard library the package will be part of the library if the user creates he has to create uh, what is a package maybe uh, old times it was many a times dual inline package. So uh, this was to be precisely created so that the PCB uh, when one make PCB it is precise and uh, the, the chip goes into the into the pin holes and, and the tracks are aligned and so on. But basically essentially a schematic uh, would tell how is the interconnection or uh, uh, or the, the it is called a net list ok. Just shows the symbol and the interconnection between the IC and it does not give you what is the function of the circuit. Many a times uh, you have to refer to the data sheet of each IC try to understand the internal in simple case gates and all it will be simple but if there is a processor one has to read uh, the data sheet of all the uh, complete processor to understand uh, memory, processor, gauge, flip flops everything need to be understood and sometimes a design description need to be written saying that this is a particular IC, uh, this is a function of that IC and so on. So that was one big problem that it just does not convey anything other than uh, kind of uh, connectivity information uh, that was the first problem with the schematic capture and the second problem was that there were a lot of schematic capture or the CAD tools and everybody had many a times a proprietary format that means uh, the CAD tool if you are using a, a CAD tool from a vendor A uh, the file stored in that format may not be openable uh, you, you cannot you know edit using some other tool ok. Uh, that was big problem a proprietary standards were followed and many a times um, uh, this kind of tool did not support something called a black box design say uh, go back to our um, uh, hierarchical design of the CPU and initially at the level 0 we put a black box and said the clock and reset and read bar, write bar were the inputs, outputs and so on and uh, then we have partitioned it into a level 1 kind of partition still it was black box you know that is ALU registers, program counters ultimately when we broke down into non pieces it has it has come to some kind of gates and flip flops or some non blocks. So uh, this was one uh, difficulty with the, the schematic a hierarchical design was not possible or top down approach was not uh, possible in this thing. So this tell you that if you had to design a finite state machine. Uh, now when we describe the finite state machine we said you could kind of describe that in hardware description language and the, the tool will make the next state logic and output logic this was not possible with schematic capture. You need to you know draw the state diagram you need to make the truth table minimize it and then implement those minimize equations using the gates and flip flops and so on. So, this was kind of external you work externally and bring the design into the schematic capture and they also supported some kind of simulation because there is a flip flop if the model of the flip flop was available then you could simulate the whole circuit I mean model of all the chips used are available then using some kind of simulator the behavior of this could be uh, kind of simulated but um, again these were proprietary like the vendor A will give some models but that was not compatible with uh, the other, other tools and so on. There were it is not that it is completely proprietary there were standards uh, for you know the CAT file exchanges you know the schematic exchanges and the, uh, the simulation models and so on. But 
uh, not everyone was following and there were problems uh, issues with it and there was the huge problem was that these were binary files and if there is one bit goes wrong uh, everything is corrupted and uh, so there were such were the problems with the schematic capture. Now uh, the department of defense had a lot of vendors making big systems so that, I mean they have huge rack of cards uh, comprising a system maybe each subsystem was designed by a separate vendor and they all use different tools and to put it together and to understand to, to kind of um, coordinate the whole activity was a big problem. That is why this particular standard came up and they thought of basically documenting the schematic you know that started with documenting. So basically to describe in human readable language English language the description of the circuit that was a basic idea uh, so that it is portable like all the vendors use the same language to describe the circuit so that one can read and understand that was a basic uh, idea. So it, it started with documentation uh, you know document it well you know describe it unambi unambiguously so that the human can understand. And there is it, it was an open standard it is human readable it is portable and so on. Then later on people thought anyway uh, we are describing the behavior of subsystems or small circuits uh, using uh, some language why not use that description to simulate the behavior of the circuit. Still the design was uh, largely done on schema schematic capture but then the simulation came second. And ultimately when everybody started using simulation uh, people started thinking why not generate the circuit itself from the description okay. So these are the three uses of uh, the, the VHDL language documentation simulation synthesis which is I mean which happened at different points in time. So you will see uh, all these features in the language okay. So there are documentation features you know you, when you look at the VHDL. Uh, people will fee, uh, you know see that the entity is uh, or architecture a name is of and all that and people often complain saying that what this if and of and why the computer algorithm need this human readable thing but you know you should remember that this was meant for documentation and uh, anyway you can use standard templates you can make your own templates or uh, copy paste the old templates and so on. So do not complain uh, that much about uh, it is a little bit verbose language so do not uh, complain about that part of it. And similarly there are when you come back that there are you know the, the syntax for simulation there are some constructs in the language which is only used for simulation there is no point in using it for synthesis okay. So this should be kept in mind it is not that all like anything you write can be synthesized you know there are different there are some things meant for synthesis something meant for simulation some part of the language is merely meant for documentation. So do not complain too much and the language support hierarchical design uh, you can do the top down design with a black box um, absolutely no issue you can do bottom up or whatever uh, and much to the to the convenience there are higher level constructs you know you can describe the behavior uh, not just boolean equations but you can use uh, higher level constructs like if then case when loops. Uh, so it, it kind of give a power to describe the language uh, at many levels at a very detailed level abstract level uh, and as we go along we will see what is the how we can uh, efficiently use this construct to describe and what, what are the best scenarios to use certain constructs and so on. And it supports library based design that means that you can put suppose you have designed a, a, a counter um, a generic counter you can put that in a library and later on you do not have to redesign that. So any anything which is modular generic can be put in the library similarly various operators various functions procedures everything can be put in the library so that that can be reused. So it is a great help uh, uh, you are in an organization in a particular business and you are you are making designs over the years. So you can have a good library of the, the various uh, modules subsystems uh, components you are using 
and so that uh, when a new design need to be made uh, you can quickly make it using already uh, well designed components interconnect them or modify them quickly and put it together. So that is a big advantage and uh, one um, lacune or uh, you know or a feature of the, the VHDL is that it is strict type checking that means that uh, data type is strict you know you suppose you declare something uh, called bit okay bit is something takes uh, 1 and 0 and there is a another uh, kind of data type called standard logic okay we will see that but that also support 1 and 0 and many more things. But uh, in VHDL suppose there is a signal which is of a data type bit this cannot be assigned to the something of data type uh, standard logic okay. This is looks like a restriction but it is a very good thing because uh, if you do not know what you are doing because you are interconnecting various signals and if you are not careful like uh, you uh, declared something as an integer of some range and uh, there is some kind of bus which is 8 bit and you try to connect this integer to that kind of bus 8 bit bus maybe that uh, your range of integers is more than 8 bit and then there is a confusion uh, like you, you end up with 12 bits and how to connect this 12 bits to 8 bits and if the tool decide that least significant uh, bits will be connected then you are in trouble. So that is why uh, the strict type checking is enforced it is a good thing because we are making hardware uh, not to make mistake uh, the VHDL enforces. Uh, strict type checking and there are like it is not that you cannot assign a bit to a standard logic you have to forcefully uh, convert the data type then you are aware of it and then you will take caution uh, that is why it is uh, provided. So let us move on um, to the slide and let us look at uh, the main design unit of the VHDL. So the VHDL design or any block has two parts when you describe it has two part any component has an end entity which is nothing but the interface uh, specification and the architecture which is functionality okay this and we will take an example of orbit comparator uh, this part is taken basically from the reference book Kevin Scahill at least this starting part is taken from there. So, um, uh, say you look at an equality comparator so you have A and B which are 4 bit and there is a single bit signal called equal when the numerical value of A is exactly equal to B that means if it is say 1010 and B is 1010 this will be 1 that is the meaning of it. So entity means a name for the block some name what are its input port okay. So you say input port is A and B which is 4 bit and what is the data type is it bit or standard logic vector and so on okay. So and similarly what is the output uh, how many bits are there is it a single bit or multi bit and what is the data type. So that comprises the entity so give a name for the block what are the inputs what are the outputs. So you have to clearly say what is the name uh, whether it is input output and so on and what is the data type. Now comes architecture having defined the entity you define what is inside the architecture is nothing but the functionality. So you have to define what is the function of the circuit in terms of the input and output that means you, you somehow you say that equals will be 1 if a is equal to B you know in some there are many ways of describing it but that is a, the functionality. So uh, you describe the functionality of this block equality comparator in terms of the input and output okay. So you say output how the output is assigned from the input that is the basic uh, crux of the VHDL entity and architecture entity means the name input output the base basic uh, the data types and the architecture means function in terms of the input output and you know the circuit you know the when you come to the basic implementation uh, we need 
to have each bit you know suppose if you have a a3 a2 a1 a0 b3 b2 b1 b0 you can see that uh, for these number to be equal a3 should be equal to b3 a2 should be equal to b2 and so on. So, we use an exclusive NOR gate because exclusive OR gate has 0 1 and 1 0 as 1 but here you have 0 0 and 1 1 as 1. So, unless all these are equal this will not be 1 and if all these bits are 1 then we have this AND gate is making it 1. So, you know the circuit for exclusive OR gates uh, and sorry exclusive NOR gates and one AND gate is a function. So, that is uh, the VHDL way of uh, describe main uh, kind of component um, kind of uh, sub uh, description entity and architecture. So, let us uh, look at uh, this equality comparator VHDL code straight away and try to um, kind of um, see how to write a VHDL code and what are the basic components and so on. So, say uh, when you like I have written here 2 dashes and 4 bit equality comparator that means this is a comment okay. If you start a dash anywhere you could you know I could put 2 dash here and write something. So, anything after the dash is a comment and you know that there is no way to kind of uh, make it you know nest with multiple lines uh, not a big problem earlier when people used to use the keyboard that was a big problem. Uh, you know suppose you have 10 lines to comment it if you have to put everywhere it is a big problem. Nowadays with the GUI it is very easy you select everything and click on an icon then everything become commented. So, this is a comment character only for a line it does you cannot nest it okay. And the next thing is interesting it say okay now the, the, the um, I have shown the code in two colors basically in green and the blue and the whatever is written in the green color is a VHDL keyword and rust is what we are writing okay. So, that is to make out so like library is a keyword of the VHDL use is a keyword of the VHDL and so on okay. So, uh, here we are saying we are going to use library IEEE that there are IEEE standard libraries. So, we are we are saying that we are going to for this entity and architecture we are going to use library IEEE. So, when you declare that uh, this IEEE libraries are visible only to this entity and this architecture. Suppose in the same file you write another entity and architecture you have to and you need to use a library then you have to write again library before the entity and architecture. And just writing the library the it makes a library visible to the code, but not the packages library has lot of packages within it. So, it is a hierarchy of uh, library. So, you have library you have packages and within the packages you have components, functions, procedure, data type and so on okay. So, that is hierarchy and we are going to say that uh, uh, that we are going to use a particular package within this library called uh, standard logic standard underscore logic underscore 1164 dot all okay. So, we are going to use uh, this particular package for this entity and architecture that is the meaning of this and um, now onwards we are going to use the standard logic library. The reason is that if you look at the VHDL inbuilt data type is bit okay uh, as far as the logic is concerned and it supports only two values you know 0 and 1 and this is a great limitation and for digital design we just cannot do with only 0 and 1 we, de we need many other things. At least uh, you know that we have tri state gate uh, which we use and we want to use at least an Z describe saying that some output need to be tri stated. So, that and that is described in a standard underscore logic and that is a kind of data type which is used which is available in this particular uh, library and package. So, that is why we use this. So, it supports uh, you know the data types like uh, 0 1 uh, values like 0 1 z and you know there is many times in uh, minimization we use do not care. So, it support do not care and all that many more we will see what are the 
values in this uh, standard logic data type, uh, but for the time being uh, understand that it will at least support a Z uh, which is uh, uh, represent the tri state which is very much required for the design. So, now onwards all the code we will not get into bet we will use the data type standard logic uh, that is what it shows. Now, this comes the entity description. So, the keyword is entity give some name it does not matter and this is what I said is 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 a kind of for, for documentation and you say end this particular name eq comp ok. So, that is a body of the entity. So, you start with the keyword entity a name is and end that name then that is kind of that is uh, the body of the entity and within that we have to describe the inputs and outputs and the keyword used for that is port you open the port with the parenthesis left and right and semicolon you can see that all the kind of syntax is terminated by semicolon. So, if you describe something a complete entity then you put a semicolon complete port then you put a semicolon everything every statement every kind of uh, the body is terminated by a semicolon. Now, you see this is the input specification and this is the output specification. So, we have two types of inputs two inputs a comma b. So, if it is of the same size same data type we use it in the same line say here a comma b then you put a colon this is the name. Now, we say what is the direction of the port it is an in means it is an input and standard underscore logic underscore vector 3 down to 0 that means that uh, the a is a 4 bit vector which is a of 3 a bracket you know 3 like we have seen here a of 3 a of 2 a of 1 a of 0. Similarly, b of 3 b of 2 b of 1 b of 0 ok that is the meaning of it. The moment you say standard logic vector 3 down to 0 uh, that means it is a of 3 a of 2 a of 1 a of 0. There is another syntax you can say instead of 3 down to 0 you can say 0 to 3 it is possible to write like that and there is a difference we will soon say what is the difference and let us come to this equals which is a name and the, the mode of the di or the direction is out and the data type is standard logic ok. So, when you describe a port you have to give a name you have to set tell the direction you have to tell the, uh, the data type and now when you say there has to be clarity with this kind of direction of the port. So, when you say uh, in it means that it is an input ok. Uh, it cannot be treated as an output that means that when you write some assignment like here we are writing the assignment equals get 1 when a equal to b. So, a and b are the inputs in any assignment the input can come only at the right hand side of the assignment ok. That should be kept in mind when you have something declared as a as a direction in it can come only on the right hand side of the the assignment and there is similarly there is out and out means it is an output port something drives you know there is an uh, some kind of gate of flip flop its output is driving a signal which is outside and when you declare something is out like equals that can that should come on the left hand side only. You cannot write uh, you know something like z gets 1 when equals equal to something now you cannot write. Uh, on the right hand side ok, but that uh, could be a restriction and you look at this kind of thing like we have some many a times an output uh, a tap is taken from the output and used as an input to the some circuit inside. This is uh, quite common you know you have something coming like some gate is driving an output, but that output is going to the output pin also it is used as an input to the further circuit. Uh, you know within uh, within this block ok, but by definition if you use a out such a thing cannot happen with the VHDL. So, there is a roundabout there is a kind of 
uh, way out that is to declare this uh, output as buffer like you say equals is buffer you know standard logic. But this has this has a problem because uh, um, as a standalone it is okay but when you have multiple components buffer it cannot be connected together you know there is a there is an issue with the buffer. So I do not think that um, you should or we will not be using this particular uh, direction of the output signal at all and what we are going to do is that there are internal signal you know you can use signal. So what we are going to do is that we will do normally in our codes we will declare a signal here which can you know which can definitely connect to the some output and can connect to some input and ultimately this signal we can assign it to some pin you know that is what we are going to do in our code. Uh, so uh, literally forget about this particular uh, direction of the port buffer. Now there is one other uh, direction specification which is nothing but in out or an IO. So now that is not a same as buffer in the case of buffer it is still an output uh, the pin is an output but uh, there is a tapping which is used internally okay. But when you say something is in out it literally means sometime there is a definitely a tri state gate and when the enable is 1 this circuit will drive uh, the circuit which is outside okay. And when it is cut off when it is not disabled this part is inactive there is nothing you know it is tri stated and this can be used as an input pin that means literally something can drive the pin okay. So uh, there is a difference between this uh, structure and this and you should not use uh, in out for out or buffer okay. And I have seen uh, sometime people you know use out and something goes wrong and they somehow find that if you write in out uh, that can be circumvented because of some kind of simulator difficulties uh, maybe at the appropriate time I will tell uh, people tend to use in out where in out is not meant to be used okay. So that should not happen uh, you should not use uh, in out in place of buffer that in out is used only when a pin is used as both as output and input and necessarily there has to be a tri state gate without which there is no way to use an IO pin. Now that is the uh, kind of various direction in out buffer and in out and as I said forget about buffer we will use the wires I will show at the appropriate time. And standard logic vector is a repetition of the standard logic like you know this is I have 4 bit standard logic is a standard logic vector and as I said you could write 3 down to 0 or 0 to 3 okay. There is a difference when you write 3 down to 0 the most significant bit is 3 and least significant bit is 0. When you write 0 to 3 um, the most significant bit is the 0 that means whichever comes on the left hand side and uh, the least significant bit is the 3 which is on the right hand side. So the rule is simple whatever you write on the left hand side is the most significant bit and whatever you write on the right hand side is the least significant bit. Now you might ask what is the big deal you know what does it matter okay. Um, it matters if you have studied a kind of uh, the processors uh, from the Intel. Um, actually this has some history or uh, you know behind the Intel processors used to treat suppose you have a data bus which is going from uh, 16 like 16 bit data bus um, the D15 was treated say the data 15 was treated as the most significant bit and D0 was uh, treated as uh, the, the least significant bit and this was called little endian that means uh, the, the small number will end the end the you know is it at the end part and then uh, the Motorola uh, which was a kind of a competitor to Intel uh, when they came out with this processor subsequently that has become free scale but uh, when they came out the numbering was uh, kind of opposite uh, the say D15 was LSP and D0 was a MSP okay. Now, 
you can imagine. Uh, so, this is something to do with this 3 down to 0 or 0 to 3 has something to do with the uh, kind of the bit order and the byte order and so on. So, if you are using little endian then you should use terminology like 15 down to 0. If you are using big endian then you should use 0 to 3. So, you may even end up with uh, you are designing a chip on one side you are connecting to some other chip from another vendor which has a bus in, in, in little endian order and the, uh, the second side as a bus which is in the big Indian order then you should appropriately uh, kind of uh, define this properly otherwise things can go wrong. So, you should keep that in mind it is not that you know it is not your convenience, but if you are designing a complete chip of your own which is not to be interconnected anywhere then you can choose what, what you want to do like uh, whether uh, the you, you adopt a little Indian or big Indian kind of style for your multi bit. Uh, uh, signals uh, that has to be decided. So, that is all about the entity. So, we have looked uh, in detail what is the entity, what is the port, what are the directions, the little endian, big endian in the case of multi bit and so on. Now, comes the, the, the functionality which is defined as architecture. So, you say architecture which is a keyword, give some name arc underscore eqcom that is my style of doing it of this particular entity say you whatever the entity name um, uh, is written here. So, this is the kind of link between the entity and architecture you say architecture a name of which name you have to say is ok. Now, you say begin that is where you describe uh, the functionality ok and before that before the begin you could declare many things you know you could declare uh, components you can define define functions procedure and so on ok. So, uh, we will see what could be done before that and when you write um, say the statement I we will see what are the statements and so on. Say this is an output signal and this is an assignment operator which is similar to which is exactly similar to less than or equal to and the VHDL also use the same uh, for the less than or equal to. So, depending on the context I know the meaning of that is derived. So, 1 you know 1 is written with the quotes left quote and right quote because in the library in the standard logic library the values are defined with the quotes uh, like you know 1 uh, with the left quote and right quote when a equal to b else it is 0 ok. So, uh, equals uh, get 1 when a equal to b else it gets 0 ok very simple. Uh, the description is over and you say end this architecture whatever is the name. So, that architecture is over. So, that is the code in a nutshell you have a comment, you have a library, you have a use package uh, kind of construct, you have an entity with port mainly within the entity is a port uh, direction, the data type, uh, the multi bit uh, declaration, then the architecture before the begin there is a declaration in the statement region you write various statement then the description is over ok. So, that is in a nutshell a kind of the basic VHDL code. So, and you can use various keywords various names and let us move on to the slide I summarize whatever I have said. So, I have said comments start with anywhere on the line and library as an hierarchy library packages and it contains components functions, procedures, various data objects, uh, data types and things like that. Then you have different mode or direction you have in out, in out and buffer and we said this has very uh, limited usage and in out and the out is different or buffer is different. Then we have down to and to. So, you have to worry about little endian, big endian, bit order, byte order and things like that. And when you define some name you can use alphabets, you can use numbers, you can use underscore and it is not case sensitive first character should be an alphabet. The last character should not be underscore and you should not have uh, two underscore in succession and I do not remember uh, the exact uh, number of characters you can use uh, for the maybe it is 32 characters you can use you can check with the standard because the standards keep changing. 
but for practical purposes uh, your normal uh, names you can give uh, quite a long names uh, that should not be problem but better to check with your with the VHDL later standard and the tool compatibility what the tool support maybe you refer to the VHDL uh, latest standard but the tool support the earlier standard then you will be in trouble then you should be careful with that. So, that is uh, in summary uh, about the code. So, let us move on the, the architecture body. So, you, we have said that in an architecture before the begin you can declare many things you know there is lot of things you can declare that is what is shown here. The architecture has two parts before the begin you can declare something after the begin you can write the statements you can describe the function. So, what all you can declare is that you can declare components, components are you know like equality comparator gates or flip flops or multiplexers, encoders all that is the components. The type data type like standard logic, bit, boolean and things like that and constant like you have a, a bus width you can decide you know define as a constant like size or width. Signal we have described uh, like you want to interconnect kind of two ports or um, output of some block with an input of another block then you can use signals. You can also use functions and procedures uh, for the time being we will keep it aside, but then you can literally define functions and procedure not declare you can literally define in the architecture declaration region which is visible only to the architecture statement region. Okay. So, after architecture statement region is where you put all the description in terms of various constructs. So, let us turn uh, to the logical operators. So, you have all the logical operators you have AND, NAND, OR, NOR, XOR, XNOR and NOT. But the trouble with the VHDL is that the basic operators uh, within VHDL uh, support only the bit and the boolean. Okay. But as we described in the, in the, the first slide we are not going to use the bit because it is restricted uh, by 1 and 0. We are going to use the data type called standard std underscore logic we call it standard logic. So, std underscore logic is called standard logic and this is uh, but you do not have to worry about um, the logical operators for this data type because um, in this particular package IEEE standard logic 11 six for package which we have used in our code the first uh, example code uh, this uh, logical operators are overloaded overloaded means whatever was written for the bit is rewritten for the uh, the standard logic data type. So, the moment you declare you know you like here the moment you declare use IEEE dot standard underscore logic underscore one one six four dot all means we could use uh, all that and 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 all that here in the statement region and the all means everything in it like that means the entity and architecture following this use construct can use whatever uh, there is within this particular package that is the meaning of all. Um, so, that is the logical operators then you have arithmetic operators uh, you have uh, the plus you can add minus multiplication integer division exponentiation because many a times we work with the power of 2 then you suppose you have a, 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 a data bus which is 8 bit 8 bit width then you know that it can go take values from 0 to 2 raise to 8 minus 1. Okay. So, uh, where these kind of exponentiation operators are useful then you have a modulo division uh, kind of modulo remainder then the absolute value. There is a little confusion with this terminology like mode is different from the computer science mode. The mode definition is say a mode b is a minus b into n like suppose you say 13 mode 3 that means you know that it is 13 minus 3 into 4. So, which is 12 the highest number you can put before it crosses over then you get 1. Okay. So, if you, you know that when you do a mod n the result has to be 
0 to n minus 1, but there is an issue with this um, kind of uh, um, uh, the, the expression because it does not uh, work well with the negative values because you know that at the mode n has to map any number to 0 to n minus 1. So, that is why this RUM operator is given uh, which is e actually this is equivalent to the computer science definition of the mode a RUM b is nothing but a minus the floor of a by b into b ok. For positive numbers it makes no difference because if you say again 13 mode 3 uh, you, it is 13 minus 13 by 3 integer division is sorry the uh, kind of uh, uh, the real division will yield you 13 by 3 will give you some uh, you know uh, 4 point something uh, which is uh, the floor of that is the, the, the decimal part is thrown off uh, the fraction part is thrown off. So, you will get 3 and 3 into 4 is 12 and 13 minus 12 is 1 you know you get it correctly. But if you say minus 13 then you will end up with a you, you there is a confusion but uh, with this formula but with this formula there is no issue because minus 13 by 3 you will get minus 3 point something the floor of it is uh, the lesser number so which is minus 4 into 3 is minus 16 and you have minus 3 minus minus 16 you get plus 3 ok. You do not get a 1 but uh, because you are uh, sorry it is 13 uh, like minus 13 by 4 is uh, 3.4 uh, 4 into 3 12. So, uh, so this is minus 12 so minus minus 12 plus 12 and you will get uh, you, you will end up with a with a positive number uh, that is the, the, the crux of it. Uh, you can work out with an appropriate example, but very important thing to note is that all these operators are defined internally for the data type integer and real. Integer is the integer as you know, the real is the, the real numbers or the, the kind of floating point uh, data type. Uh, this internal operators cannot be will not work for the standard logic data type, but if you use um, standard logic unsigned package in the use case like you say library I triple and you say use I, I triple e dot standard logic unsigned dot all then you can use plus minus uh, multiplication division and all that. Mind you uh, if you write a code with this with the standard logic it might work for simulation it may not synthesize and generate a proper circuit for you. You have to keep that in mind everything does not work sometime you have to write your own low level design for some of these to work or it will give some rudimentary circuit which is not that we want and things like that. So, you have to keep that in mind and let us come to the relational operators. So, relational operators are equal to greater than less than less than or equal to greater than or equal to and not equal to ok. These are the relational operation operators you say when a equal to b or if a less than b and so on and uh, you see that less than or equal to operator is same as the assignment operator. So, depending on the uh, kind of context you use uh, the, the tools will infer uh, what is the, the kind of operator appropriate operator and will, will find it you do not have to worry. Once again internally these are defined for integer and real for standard logic data type. Um, this is overloaded these operators are overloaded for standard logic function um, uh, in uh, in the package called I triple e dot standard logic arith ok. So, uh, in principle like if you uh, use uh, 3 packages like uh, I triple e standard logic 1164 I triple e standard logic uh, unsigned and I triple e standard logic arith uh, you can do uh, many things with uh, the standard operators at least you can work with the standard logic data type. So, keep that in mind and when it comes to shift operators you have logical shift, arithmetic shift and rotate. So, you have shift left logical SLL. So, that is just simple left shift 
uh, shift right logic is symbol right shift and shift left arithmetic and shift right arithmetic works with the 2's complement number. So, in 2's complement number you know that the most significant bit represent the MSB or the most significant bit and that is a sign bit. So, for negative numbers it will be 1 and when you extend suppose you have an 8 bit number with the, the sign bit as 1 when you convert this into 16 bit then all the numbers starting from the 9th sorry uh, a number 8 bit to 15 bit has to be 1. So, when you do a shift left arithmetic this sign extension will be automatically taken care that is the meaning of left shift left arithmetic and shift right arithmetic. So, if you do some arithmetic using the shift operators like you know that shifting left uh, is like multiplying by 2 shifting right is like dividing by 2 and if you are uh, working with unsigned integer then the shift SLL SRL like logical shift works, but if you use arithmetic like if you use um, kind of signed integers then uh, you have to essentially do uh, the shift left arithmetic and shift right arithmetic to, to preserve the sign otherwise things will go wrong and you can work out you know you take a 4 bit number uh, work out the negative numbers you work out you know if you extend it in a to 8 bit uh, make sure that you get the same value with the sign extension that should convince you and uh, that gives you little clear understanding of the 2's complement numbers you can you know work with the uh, even the decimal numbers and how this uh, old game works you can you must have studied but then that brings clarity and once again the shift left arithmetic and uh, shift left logical and arithmetic uh, all these are defined for the bit and the boolean data type for the standard logic data type uh, this is overloaded in the standard logic arith package. So, that is what I said you use these 3 packages most things will work uh, you know standard logic un, uh, 1164 unsigned and arith and you have an operator called aggregate operator. Uh, essentially it is shown here uh, suppose you have a signal uh, like standard logic signal with A, B, C uh, these are single bit signal uh, ok. Now, I am using bit do not confuse bit I mean the real bit of the digital system not the bit data type of the, the VHDL ok. So, here we are trying to make it uh, combine A, B, C into a 3 bit kind of bus. So, you have a signal, uh, signal is a keyword. this is a name which is of type standard logic vector 2 down to 0 that means there is tem 2, tem 1, tem 0. Now, we say tem is nothing but assigned uh, in the in the in the brackets you say a comma b comma c that means tem 2 is a, tem 1 is b, tem 0 is c. So, this this is called aggregate operator. So, you can aggregate um, individual signals which can be single bit multi bit uh, to a bus, but the restriction is that these elements individual elements should be of the same data type and should be same size. It is not that A can be 3 bit, B can be 2 bit and this is single bit it has to be either single bit, 2 bit, 3 bit together, but uh, even better flexible operator is a uh, kind of concatenation operator which will work for the same data type for different size say you can see here we are declaring a, a data type new data type which is the keyword is type byte is array array is a keyword uh, it is an array of single bits that is the meaning of it uh, 7 down to 0 of bit ok bit is uh, the byte is nothing but an array of uh, 8 bit array of bit is the meaning of it. And we say uh, signal count is a byte and we say now the byte is an 8 bit uh, kind of signal we say count gets uh, 0 1 0 and 0 0 1 0. So, this is a 3 bit kind of uh, uh, signal and this is a 5 bit signal which is combined it. So, this and is much more flexible concatenation operator the type has to be same, but you can uh, join things together it's very useful in digital design you have some kind of uh, some parts of the bus come come from different places which is combined together to make a bigger bus and things like that. Uh, so, that is very useful uh, these operators and there is a precedence of the operators. So, you have 
uh, the highest precedence is 6 as you go down 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, uh, 1 has the lowest precedence. Um, so, you have miscellaneous operators are highest precedence then multiplying uh, addition, shift, relational and logical operators and not operator has precedence 6 and when you write uh, the same precedence operator from left to right uh, it is evaluated left to right. But it is very difficult to remember all these um, I suggest you remember uh, the kind of use the brackets uh, possible it is uh, good for you know uh, understanding even if you write you write the code somebody read it is very easy to understand. So, maybe we will stop here uh, today's lecture. So, we started with the VHDL uh, how did it kind of evolve what was the basic context uh, the department of defense has trouble with the schematic. So, it started with documenting then use for simulation synthesis it is human readable uh, it works with the computer language support hierarchy it support a higher level construct library based design and so on it is an open I to please standard. So, whichever tool does not matter you know the different tool vendors everybody uses the same language and uh, we have seen uh, basically an entity and architecture entity is the interface architecture is a function then uh, we have seen an example code we have looked at the, the entity port the direction the mode the data types bit, bit order byte order then architecture declaration region statement region a statement and various operators you we have seen the logical operators and the particular data type called standard logic and which are the libraries which is used for the standard logic then we have looked at the arithmetic operators we have made found what is the difference between mode and ram then you have we have looked at the relational operators as two special operators called aggregate and concatenation operator. So, um, now in the next class we will see a uh, little bit how to what is the design tool flow uh, uh, you know various uh, kind of different models of description and so on ok. So, I suggest you it looks simple to start with. So, please go back brush up uh, understand it thorough you can refer to some good books. Uh, to get a grip uh, on the on this particular VHDL. Uh, there are a lot of good books as I said earlier maybe you use some uh, book with synthesis uh, as the emphasis. So, that is it uh, I wind up this lecture I wish you all the best and uh, thank you.